In this video, I'll show you how any manual lens can be integrated with Skyhoy control panels using the Nucleus lens gear system from Tilta. And we have even hooked this amazing kit up with the Red V Raptor camera here. The principles behind using Tilta lens gears apply virtually to any camera though, and that makes it possible to pair your dream lens with your dream camera for your dream production setup. And you can mount it on a pan tilt head even, and then you essentially have built your dream PTC camera. So let's take a look at how all these pieces come together, but first we wanna see it in action. So it's already hooked up here, it's already calibrated, and we can use either our PTC Extreme, PTC camera controller, or an RCP like this one to control it. So the RCP would be for a shading operator, the guy who is concerned with the color of the video image. And his joystick on the RCP will control the lens gear. So you can see the first motor here is turning as I am operating this joystick, all right? You also see the image coming out of the camera has its iris adjusted. Okay, so that's pretty simple. All it takes to make this work is basically calibrating the motor, hooking up with a blue pill, and then point these devices to the IP address of that one. So you even see that we have f-stop values shown in the display on the joystick, very, very convenient. Now, when it comes to zoom and focus, because that's the other two dimensions on this lens, we can better show that from the PTC Extreme. This is a camera operator. So imagine this is instead of having a um, guy standing behind the camera, he now has a joystick and turning the knob of the joystick, he can zoom. So we'll see that he is now zooming the lens. Again, there is a motor here, which is turning as I am zooming and that's again a part of the setup of the Tilsa system. Finally, we want to do focus. Let's just zoom all the way in here and we see it's out of focus. Again, this is the camera operator. It's not the shading operator, it's the camera operator and he will have a zoom or focus knob on his PTC Extreme. So with this thumb roller here, he can bring it into focus and that was the third motor right here. A manual lens like this is basically without any electronics that will make it automatically move. Of well, it could have electronics. I think if you put this one onto a uh, DSLR camera for photography, the, the aperture can actually be controlled by the camera. But in this case, the red camera won't do it, or we have disabled it for the sake of the demonstration. So some lenses, they do have some sort of automation, like they have a motorized focus, they have a motorized iris, but they may not have a motorized zoom. And therefore you can actually apply all three axes if you want, focus, zoom, and iris, or you can choose some of them as you'll see in a moment. But first we have just seen how each of these dimensions on the lens can be controlled from the relevant control panel. And by that I mean a shading operator is concerned with iris, the camera operator is concerned with the focus and the zoom in this case. The setup we see here is the lens, uh, the lens gears from uh, Tilsa, which are serially connected by the cables that come with the kit. And then the blue pill here on top plays a special role because this is the one that connects with um, ethernet on the one side. You see that blue cable coming in on the right side of the blue pill is a uh, power over ethernet and an IP address basically. So this is how these panels uh, uh, this is what these panels are talking to when they are controlling the lens. On the other side, there's a USB plug coming in and that's connected to the Tilta lens gears. So you need that blue pill sitting there on top of the camera to do that conversion from IP to the blue pill, uh, to the USB commands that the Tilta lens gears will pick up. All right, it also has an additional function because as you will see, on the blue pill here, it has a um, currently a green indication in it and it says one. And that's because it's camera one. And now I just put down some commands on my PTC Extreme. So if I press the cut button here, you see that I'm basically cutting camera number one, this camera on, and then back to preview, back to program, back to preview. And you see that red and green color, which is uh, currently associated with camera number one is also reflected on the blue pill. So the blue pill is more than just a signal converter. It's also a tally lamp in this case. Totally voluntary if you want to use it in this way, but it's possible and it can be quite convenient. 
And now I am bringing it off completely so now you can see it's neither on program or preview tab. So okay, just a little additional thing. See, the blue pill here, it has an IP address and it has a web UI. You see that web UI right here. You see how the blue pill is uh, connected to an ATEM switcher, which is currently used for providing the tally information. And most importantly, it has the Tilta Nucleus um, device core installed on it, which connects to the lens gears. And it is now offering access to that on the network. So if we go to the web UI of the RCP Pro, you'll see that here we have a device core talking to the red camera installed. And then we have also the Tilta Nucleus, but it's on the IP address of the blue pill. So we are basically not talking straight to the lens gears here, but we are talking through the blue pill that offers access to the lens gears. And the same is true if we go to the PDC Extreme. Here we see, uh, in this case, we have also the ATEM added because I wanted to have tally lights here on my controller for this little improvised control. But we have the same, the Tilsa Nucleus is added as a device call running on the blue pill out here. And the V Raptor is also connected. So these two panels are independently connected to the camera and to the blue pill to do their controls. An integral part of working with the Tilta lens gears is that you need to calibrate them. It's not something we made up, it's a part of the lens gears themselves. So you send a command like calibrate and what it will do is it will turn the motors until it hits the ends of the ring it's turning. And uh, it will pick up those end stops and then allow you to adjust the motor position within that range. Let's try to initiate a calibration from inside the blue pill. So what you're looking at right here is the Tilta application on the blue pill. So we, we are on the blue pill here. This is the web UI of that device. We have the Tilta device core installed. And because that one has an application uh, bundled with it called... Um, yeah, Tilta basically, it pops up in the menu up here and it's available like this. And the cool thing is that if your blue pill is available on a Wi-Fi network, you can pull this UI up on your phone and uh, it's simply phone friendly so that you can calibrate standing with your phone next to the, uh, the lens and see that everything is working as it's supposed to. If we want to calibrate the iris, we press this button and notice what happens here on the motor, okay? Starts turning in one direction to the end of the other one, and then it stops in the middle. That's all it takes. The remaining information we have here is, first of all, motor ID. That is motor number one, and that has to be reflected in that field. You have motor number two for uh, zoom, the one here in the middle, and motor number three for focus out here. So the torque is how aggressive is the motor gonna be? The torque has to be high enough to turn the ring but it also has to be small enough to not overturn it and f and basically thereby um, just yeah, destroying the lens gears basically. So you have to find a value that works for your lens. Depends on the lens because it has to do with how much resistance it has. The, the range suffix is the F that you see in the displays on your panel here or over on the uh, PDC Extreme where you see the iris value reflected. And then finally you have the range, the minimum and the maximum value and potentially a value in the middle. So this is just for the UI of the control panels. And um, you see that value is, uh, is changing from 2.8 down to 32. So where does it come from? Well, it comes from your lens because you know what is the minimum and maximum aperture of your lens. And that's what you put into these fields. The range, uh, the mid value here is basically because many of these ranges, they are not linear. So it means that this, the value in the center will be a little bit off from the actual value. And a crude way to compensate for that, which basically works in real life, would be to also enter in a mid value. What should the value be when the joystick is here in the middle? Like now it's right in the middle, it should be nine. And of course you could then look on the lens to check, is it close to nine? And if it is, then you're good. All right, so it's just it's to simplify things. Moving on to focus and zoom, we can do the same for the uh, zoom. So just notice how the zoom calibration is now starting. It's, it's hitting the end there, it's going the other way, hitting the end there, and it's now done. Okay. And of course, you need to save this after you have uh, been going through these uh, things, uh, changing potentially changing the values here. Okay. Um, moving on to focus. Focus is slightly different. And again, this illustrates that every lens is different or can be different. 
And if I start calibration on the focus, one of the, the things I need to look out for is that the focus ring here is uh, basically perpetual. You can turn it as much as you want, but of course it will stop. So I will have to look into uh, the window here on my lens, on this particular lens, and then uh, basically when I see that it hits the end, I need to grab the the ring of the focus and, and hold it so that the motor registers this uh, resistance and uh, sees it as an end stop. Are you ready? So we start calibrating. Yep, I hold it. Okay, the motor goes the other way, and we're done right there, and I'll hold it. Okay, and now it returns to its uh, normal position. That's the calibration of the focus. Why? Because this particular lens would allow the motor to just turn it, you know, forever. But now, my focus is mapped onto my um, my uh, knob here on my PTC Extreme, so all is good. I can adjust the focus of the lens. There we go. I can use the iris handle over here on the RCP to adjust the iris. And of course, I can zoom. Just like I could before, but now I showed you the calibration process. Skahoy products is all about integration you won't get from anywhere else. On these hardware panels, you can make a camera combination like this works seamlessly. The lens and the camera body will operate as if it was one. And if we put it on a pan tilt head, we can even include that so the joystick will control a third piece of hardware. We also can integrate an ATEM switcher or any other switching system, TriCasters, VMix, Grass Valley Amp. Whatever you want for switching can be used to get the tally information and put it onto the buttons on the PDC controller or on your RCP or in the display of your blue pill. This is integration from Skahoy. All the devices we support can be a part of your control experience. And for most users, the essential part of that is that they don't have to care about how you constructed the system. For them, it's just easy, out of the box, working as if it was one unit. They don't have to care about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are many more likes it out there already online with plenty more on the way. So hit like and subscribe and you won't miss any. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and X and you can subscribe to our newsletter and connect directly with our sales and support team if you want. You'll find all the relevant links to that in the description below this video. Thanks for watching.